Hi, everybody. I have been trapped in my house. Now, it is Monday. I've been trapped in my house since last Tuesday. We had some, it was really not that huge an event as weather things tend to go, but it was very, very cold. So the problem was that the steps in front of my house became incredibly icy and I have 12 steps in front of the house. So I could not get out and I couldn't get out for days and days. It, it was a horrific feeling. I couldn't even get out the back stairs. I have five stairs in back of the house because that was icy. And then when I got down the stairs, it was icy down there. So I was absolutely trapped in a house that is driving me crazy to begin with because of all the issues that I've had since I had the leak from my air conditioner at the end of last summer. I can't believe it's going on that long. I, as I had told you before, they did the initial work very quickly. They remediated the issue with the mold and they, they did water mitigation. So everything was dry. They wound up cutting out parts of my floor. They cut out parts of the sheetrock. They left me, they took off trim, which created huge issues I didn't realize because without the trim, there are spaces that allow the cold air to come up from the basement to the house. And that is not good. So with the weather being as cold as it's been and with me being trapped, I was really, really upset. I was stressed. I was just enormously stressed. So the first few days I was really feeling terrible and I was upset and it was like, it was almost like a personal pity party, you know, woe is me, how could this be? And I'm living with this misery for such a long time. And as the days wore on, I suddenly realized that this was a gift. This was really something wonderful because it forced me to sit down and assess things and assess the way in which I was doing things. Unfortunately, I could not make the repairs because I needed to get the money from the insurance company uh, for the problem in order to be able to do what I needed to do. And it took a while for that to happen, during which the uh, original mitigation company took out all my belongings from the bedroom that was most affected, and they took out most of my belongings in the living room and dining room, and they took things out of closets and whatever, cut out pieces of the floor, as I say, did a little damage along the way, which I guess is probably par for the course at that stage. But um, I was just feeling like, why was all of this coming down on me? And then as the days wore on and there was no place to go and there was no place to hide, I started to realize that I needed to reassess the way that I handle things and the way that I was going through things and the changes that I need to make in my own attempt to get things moving so that I can, in fact, hopefully at the end of this journey, be able to get out of this house. It's just too much for me right now. I can't, I can't handle it. I'm in a huge house. It makes no sense. And though I'm reluctant to move because I'm the kind of person who grows where you plant me, I need to go. It's time. It's just time to make that change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you along with me as I kind of get through the next day or so and see how things go because the stress level has made it terrible. In addition to that, I got sick. I don't know whether I ate something that was no good. I had the most god-awful stomach pains for a day or two where it was relentless to the point where I couldn't even sleep. I thought I had food poisoning, couldn't get out of the house anyway. And I was kind of waiting to see what happened. It took days and days and days. 
I still, I look as if I've not been well. I can see it on my face, but it is what it is. So I'm starting to feel better when I'm careful about what I eat. And yesterday was the first day that I got out of the house at all. My, I had started my car up because I had remote start. But aside from that, the car had not moved from the spot it was in. And of course I can't park in my driveway because the pod is there. So I was out in the street and there was snow and ice all over the car. I had to sit in the car for quite a long time before I drove it at all in order to uh, get all of the ice off the rear windshield. And once I got that resolved, I was able to go out a little bit. I didn't go too far. I didn't go too long, but I did go to the supermarket and pick up some things so I would have something to eat. The problem with that was I was using the back stairs. So I had to walk from the front of the house on the grassy area because the pod takes up the whole driveway and onto the side yard into the backyard. So I didn't want to carry too much food with me because I didn't want to risk falling. There was a lot of ice and a lot of snow and I carried a cane with me in case I needed something to help with stability given the way the, the, the grounds were. So I, it was, as I say, an enormously stressful period of time until I sat down to assess it and I recognize I have to totally change the way I do things. I'm, I'm reluctant. I'm the kind of person who holds things, especially paperwork. I'm a kind of what if kind of person. What if I need it? What if something comes up? I had a friend years ago who used to say to me, but Jerry, even if something did come up, you'd never find it. <laughs> which is no doubt the truth because there was so much stuff. In my defense, in the last couple of years, I have shredded, I think probably about, at least I would say 10 or 11 big bags of papers that went back over 20 years. I had a lot of papers for my business. I had a lot of personal papers. I had papers that were mine, that were my mother's, that were my aunt's, that were some that were David's. And I had to do that, but I've been, I've been better about keeping up with the stuff that comes in now, but paper is a huge, huge issue for me. I used to know somebody who said that her, her belief was with paperwork that you touch it once and that's it. And then you just deal with it one way or the other, and then you just don't touch it again. I'm going to uh, take you on a tiny little mini tour so you can see some of the mess that I'm living with right now. And uh, I have a guy coming over, I think I mentioned it to you. He's coming over uh, at, oh, I guess in about an hour or less to take a look at the place and give me an estimate for what he would charge me to do the repairs. So I'll let you know how that goes as well. But I'm um, recognizing a lot that I should be so grateful for what I do have. During the past couple of days when I've had nothing to do much of the time, I've been on YouTube a lot. <clears throat> I've discovered some of the joys of Netflix. I have watched some great series for me and I'll tell you about those also. But I had um, watched this, it came up in my feed there's a girl, I think she, I think her channel is called A Gal With No Plan, A Girl With No Plan, something like that. I love her. I absolutely love her. And you know the expression that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear? She's one of the teachers, no question about it, that was sent to me. Very young girl, she was struggling with addiction she got herself clean and sober. She was homeless. She lost everything. She lost her cat. She was living in a homeless shelter and she finally got, they got her a room and they got her started. She has a job and she is rebuilding her life. And she is such a sheer joy to watch. I recommend you all 
take a look at her channel. She's a very special human being. Also, she must be resonating with a lot of people because I started watching her several days ago. About a week ago, I am told she had 8,000 sub odd subscribers. And now, less than a week later, she's got over 16,000 subscribers. So she's getting a lot of new subscribers every day. There is something about her sheer, unadulterated joy at the simplest of things that can teach the rest of us so much. Be grateful for what you do have, not upset about the things you don't have. And that's a hard thing to do sometimes, but I am working on it. And I really am starting to feel that way. I'm starting to feel that I really am so lucky. How many people are in so much worse of a situation than I am? And I have a chance to rebuild on whatever level I'm meant to and to head in whatever direction I'm meant to. And all of that is fine if I only just stay healthy, which is hard to do when you're very, very stressed and all those stress hormones start to uh, take effect and your body is riddled with all of that stuff that's just so unhealthy for you, not good. So I'm trying to do whatever I can to make things work. I got myself really upset that I couldn't go out and do my work because number one, the ice and snow, and number two, I was so sick with my stomach that I, I just couldn't do it. So I have not done it in a week. And that for me is very unusual. So I'm going to try to do that by tomorrow. It has warmed up today for the first time. It has been so cold that none of the ice was melting. But today, it actually, I just checked with um, Alexa and the uh, temperature is 35 degrees here. So hopefully we'll have some melting. I'll be able to get down my front steps, hopefully, and I will be able to start to uh, do some things outside of the house. I'm gonna try to do some vlogs and take you along with me and see where it takes us. So that's another part of this journey that we're on. I'm gonna cut this one short at this point and then pick it up in the next video, but I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that I'm dealing with and it's not fun. Take care, you know I love you, and I'll see you really soon.